Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Today, I have three talented voice actors who supply the voices for three superheroes from the Justice League animated series. Maria Canals Barrera, who plays Hawkgirl, Susan Eisenberg, who plays Wonder Woman, and George Newbern, who plays Superman. All three will be attending the Comic-Con Revolution in Ontario, California, this Saturday and Sunday, November, uh, December 18th and 19th. Maria Canals Barrera is best known for her starring role as the mortal mother of the three teenage wizards in the Wizards of Waverly Place. An Alma Award winner for her role in the television series Brothers Garcia, she also starred in Cristela, The Tony Danza Show, Mary Elena, and Corte Tropical, to name a small few. Maria is currently recurring on Keenan on NBC. Susan Eisenberg is a professional voiceover artist known for her animation, promo, and commercial work and someone I get to call my friend. Her breakout role was that of Wonder Woman, AKA Princess Diana in the acclaimed Justice League and Justice League Unlimited television series. She continues her work, her animation work in cartoons such as Jackie Chan Adventures and the Superhero Squad. George Newbern is well known to television audiences for his role as Payne McIlroy on Designing Women and his role as Charlie on Scandal. Movie audiences will remember George from the blockbuster movie franchise, Father of the Bride, and a movie I grew up loving, Adventures in Babysitting, to name a small few. I'm thrilled to welcome them all here today. Please welcome to the locker room, Maria Canals Barrera, Susan Eisenberg, and George Newbern. Hello. 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 hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you for having us, Alan. Uh, Susan told me you have all known each other for 20 years. You, yeah. you started these roles 20 years ago. Do you re remember the first time you all met? Oh gosh. Well, it was on the, it was on the, at the schoolyard, right? We were all like 10 or 12, right? So <laughs> <laughs> right we were playing jacks. Yeah. 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 Um, was it when we did the pilot? Was that I think so. I think so. Yeah. No, wait, I didn't. I didn't do a pilot. I thought maybe you did a pilot, and then I, I just came in. I with the part I got, we were already it was already going. So did you do a pilot for this? I, I don't remember honestly. I just remember <laughs> doing it. I don't remember the very beginning. I remember my yeah. audition, and then I remember just being in the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I yeah, mean, I think it was already going, Maria. I don't think there was a pilot. I think you got it, okay. and it just went. Yeah, <laughs> good. What yeah. is an audition like for, you know, well, an animated project, but also. I mean, you're playing iconic characters. Go ahead, Susan and George, you first, because you guys' characters were much more well-known than mine. Uh, well, I didn't, I, I, I probably said this before, I, I didn't really understand what I was doing. I go through life sort of um, in confusion <laughs> in general. But I, went for this, I, I, I literally go where I'm told. Either my wife tells me where to go or my agent. And, um, I'll say it's my and wife, you listen. But, and I listen. He and does. I just go. Uh, but but I went to just you know a voiceover audition. I said, "Go to the valley." There's an audition, and uh, it's for for an animated thing, an animated. Uh, I thought it was a movie, and I, I go, "Oh, it's Superman." They didn't prep me, freak me out, or anything. And so I did it. And I was like, "Oh, that was Superman." I thought it was a one-off thing. So for me, it was literally just a one random Tuesday at three thirty in the afternoon, and um, you know that can be either be nothing or it can be something that lasts for 20 years which is what it's seemed to have done it's just crazy it, it, it it's seems really fun to have, yeah and for you and for you susan well it was a little bit bigger because my agent was like it was a callback you know i auditioned for it and then i got a callback where i had to go to warner brothers to audition for uh bruce tim who created the show and um andrea romano who was the voice director and the casting director and I remember my agent, Kelly, at the time saying, okay, this is huge. It's Wonder Woman. It's a callback. Go get it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, no, no, no pressure. Problem. See no you later. Pressure. And it was a lot of pressure. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, I went into the room. They showed me a drawing of what she would eventually look like. Um, they gave me sides to read. Uh, Did she they gave look me a like little Linda bit Carter? Of she did exactly. It was like <laughs> no, she didn't. Um, and then they gave me sides to read. I did it. They gave me a little bit of direction. They wanted me to toughen her up a little bit. Uh, so I did. And then it was done. Then it was like, you know, 
thank you and next. And then I didn't hear anything for a few weeks. Right. Oh. And then, then, you know, you get the good news. When, yeah. And what is it like getting the good news t truly to play superheroes? You know, the those two characters who, like Maria said, are incredibly iconic and well known. It, it, game changing, truly. I mean, for me, it was. I knew it was a big deal. My agent told me it was for a series. It was a lead in a series. Now, maybe because I had only been doing voiceover, unlike Maria and George, who did on camera work, um, I knew what a big deal it was to get a series regular on an animated series as Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I didn't know beforehand, I certainly knew once we started because every woman who came in as a guest star said, I read for that part. And so you're just like, oh, oh th this was huge. Um, and it just, I literally pinched myself every time I pulled into that garage at Warner Brothers that I could not believe this was my life, that I was getting to go into that room with all these heavy hitters, all the writers, directors, actors. I mean, they were all A-list. Everybody attached to the show was A-list. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Especially George Newman. Yeah. I, now, I knew George because I had grown up on Designing Women and Father of the Bride. So like, really, I had to keep it together when George walked in <laughs> oh, because God. I was so aware of who he was. Wow, uh, you're so funny. I was mostly all aware of Maria. Maria, Herrera. Now, how did you know Maria? I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, Maria, I didn't know, but did we know each other from Hollywood Press or no? We hadn't met yet. Then, no. Then. I think, okay, this was the first, yeah. I hadn't okay. met you yet. Yeah. Um, for, for my audition, Alan, it was, yeah. um, and I've shared this before, I'll just make it quicker. Uh, the scene was about Shaira missing Thanagar, her home planet. And um, it, was, it was pretty emotional. And so I, I jacked up my Missing Miami, where I'm from, because I'd been in L.A. just a few years. And so I, I, I remember the whole the Cuban-ness of my heritage in Miami, the food and the culture. And, the, and I just uh, lived in that space of Missing Miami. And, and that's what, you know, tied it to Shira Missing Thanagar and... Uh, and I was thrilled to get it, so happy to get it. And, you know, when you were talking about it, Susan, I was remembering, it's so funny, like little like flashes of images you remember. I remember going up and down the steps because, <laughs> you know, we'd park at the Warner Brothers yes, at the yes. mall and then we're going up and down those steps. In a, in a parking structure. In a parking structure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know if it's because I was pregnant twice in those four years that I really was conscious of going up and down those steps carefully that I remember yeah. the steps. Yeah, yeah. But it was such a sweet, joyous time to mm -hmm. have a steady job that was mm -hmm. so much fun. Yeah. With people that were wonderful, Andrea Romano, you know, universally adored as our director. Yeah. You guys were so awesome. We got to record with each other in the room. Yeah. So we got to get to know each other a little bit, play with each other. That's George fun. George is so funny. Oh, stop he it. Is. As well, no, he is. listen, it was, it was really like just cutting up in class. It was just super yes. fun. It was. Superman and Wonder Woman don't get to really be funny. You know, Flash gets the funny. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, but, yeah. But George is, you well, know, no, he's a song and dance man, and he's funny. And you don't get yeah. to see that with Superman. Right, right, right. You don't get to do it. Yeah. Was it with Phil that you would constantly do the the jokes? Was it with Phil, George? Oh, Phil and uh, Phil and Kevin and um, but mostly Phil probably. I think I bothered Phil. Maybe he didn't <laughs> like it. But I I, I just <laughs> loved to. Uh, everything made me laugh. Everything made me laugh. Yeah, um, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, just and, also and as a guy, what is it like playing Superman? Well, I was going to say just because the because the characters were also sort of archetype archetypically archetypically. Um, you know, um, are sort of set in stone in the in the mythology right. of in the, the universe, yeah, in the universe, and the you know, in American culture and world culture, that it was almost felt like this. So that's why I tended to laugh all the time because it was just like, what if Superman just has terrible gas, or you know, <laughs> everything? You, everything just made me laugh because it, it was too almost serious, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the characters were so serious, but. Um, and earnest and 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 earnest. really you know really meant it um except kevin who could you know make fun and, of and michael 
Flash. And Michael. I and mean, Michael. Yeah, Michael. That's yeah. true. Well, we didn't see Michael that much. Michael was there for the first year, and then he was gone doing um, uh, Smallville. Uh, Smallville. Yeah. Remember, he wasn't there much after the first. Right. Year. And Kevin was in New York a lot. Kevin was in New York. Yeah. Who's Michael from Smallville? Is it the Michael Rosenbaum? Oh, who played uh, Lex? Flash. Right. Flash. So Flash. he was our Flash, and oh, wow. he's a okay. total cut up, and he's he's. For me, he was like the Flash character. You yeah, know, he, he was like the younger he brother. Just he was phenomenal hilarious. On, on Smallville. And oh, I, think, I think what was, was also was... what was also great is that um, the way that Andrea instructed us to use mostly our real voices, meaning our, our authentic selves, is how I interpreted that, rather than slapping on a cartoon. Or because I think you guys had more of a challenge, which you didn't fall for. Uh, being something you're not because they're so established you used yourselves fully and I think that's the key to the many keys to the success of the show of course the writing and the animation and the direction but I think that the way Andrea directed us and the way I think we delivered was to use mostly our authentic experiences and selves and vulnerabilities and strengths to play these iconic people and that's how you move people because there is no Superman it really is the actor who plays him yeah. There is no Wonder Woman. It's the actress who plays her and she can either mm. transcend what is drawn and make people really feel emotion or not. And I think that Susan was gifted with that beautiful voice, but she also made her real. And it's kind of a challenge because isn't she kind of like a stoic princess that isn't right. very emotional, but she still, you still made us feel. And the same thing with Superman. I think, you know, with the Flash, he can be more you know, ironic and funny and sarcastic. Yeah. And and even with Hawkgirl, you know, she's not she wasn't that established. So I can play more. So and Batman, I mean, Kevin Conroy is just amazing. Talk yeah. about being being. He's hardened, but he's not completely hard. Mm -hmm. He's he's just uh, again, he's amazing. And again, so popular for a reason. I mean, the fact that we get to talk to you today, 20 years later, about these characters, and we're still <laughs> asked about it, is Crazy. such a tremendous, tremendous blessing. I mean, it's just really awesome. 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 When did you stop uh, producing them? Do you, or are you still doing them? 2006. Oh. Yeah. Wow. wow. Now, now and, then, and, you're, and, you're, and you're going to a convention tomorrow to still talk about it. Yeah. Right. Yes. And it's really from the show. Now, now. I have done other Wonder you know, I've done other projects with Wonder Woman in them, a video game, and George and I were, uh, you know, we've each done a couple of movies where Wonder Woman is there, um, and even Justice League versus the Fatal Five that came out two years ago or three years ago now, uh, it was, it was, it, was, it wasn't with Maria because it was oh. just the Trinity. Oh, okay. Um, so it was just the three of us, and they used George and Kevin and I, and they drew us like we had been in the Justice League. Right. But right. if George and Maria and I are invited places, it's because of the Justice League. Those yeah, yeah. that yeah, yeah. show established yeah. us um, for a generation of of people watching. They yeah. introduced that generation to these characters. Yeah. And with HBO Max, I just watched the first two today. <laughs> it, it, it's incredible that it's good, you isn't know it? it it's a whole new audience that you yeah. get introduced to because uh -huh. of you know mm -hmm. when you started, you, you couldn't have imagined that oh, somebody no. would be watching it on their tablet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You, don't, you, know, you, also, you know, the style of it is like, you know, if you look at Super Friends. It's it's much more it's sort of the tail end of the seventies. I kind of quack, kind of wacky. You know, the voices are, kind of, you know, yeah. Uh, but but you can watch it now, and it, it's absolutely um, Fun. Feels a little timeless. It's timeless. Yeah, yeah. and it look it looks like it could have been made today. Correct. It, Animation yeah. and and the tone and acting is is absolutely yeah. timeless. Yeah, it's so, not so, from a certain era. Well, like uh, certain yeah. shows, you're like, oh, that is such a seventies vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Justice League is doesn't have that like yeah. era vibe. Yeah. It's just it's kind of classic, and yeah. I think that's why we're still here talking about it. Yeah. Well, one one of our viewers, viewer Sam, just said, "I love this amazing talented cast." He's tuning in from Kenya. Wow. Oh my! Wow! <laughs> wow! <Welcome>. Crazy! <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> I mean that's crazy. Wow. I, I, I think I had somebody from Israel a few weeks ago and I'm like, I thought that was far. Kenya's pretty wow. pretty darn uh Kenya. I mean, what do you think? Like far. right now I go like this. How long till he sees the Do you think it's just... <laughs> I think it's like 
I think it's immediate. Golly. Depending on the Wi-Fi. And, <laughs> and an another fan, Susan, said, oh, my God, I can hear Princess Diana in her voice. Susan has an That's awesome funny. and relaxing voice. Uh, Maria, <laughs> relaxing. I have a question about... I have a question about Hawk Girl. I mean, like you said, she wasn't as well known. Did you do research? Did the director tell you more about her? What did you do to, you know, learn? Well, they they had a little description of her and I did a little bit of my own research. But again, that's very informative. But to make that moment to moment uh, emotion, you have to bring yourself and liken yourself like I did with them. Um, the nostalgia of my home planet <laughs> being Miami. And you have to bring it up, up in yourself to, to make it real and accessible. But it, yeah, it was cool to learn her real name and her history. And But I love that the show made her so much more known, so much more well-known. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at first I was so, so foolish. I thought that I was like upset that, that, they, that they wrote that she betrays the league. I was like, oh, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and then I didn't realize, you know, that this is the best thing that could have happened because conflict creates drama and it just makes it more interesting. So the fact that she was so conflicted just gave me more to work with. And mm -hmm. it was terrific. Uh, another fan, Sylvia, says, I just wanted to say this show made me want to get into animation. I loved how vulnerable you you each made your characters. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you, Sylvia. I mean, it, 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 the, it, it's animation has such an impact on people mm. for for you as voice actors and then you know recording the series do you remember seeing the match of the animation to your voices for the first yes. time mm -hmm. magic yeah. magical yeah. it's 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 crazy I, I i i find it um it's weird um a lot of times with vocal stuff you the day you're doing it it feels like you're doing it really big or whatever and then sometimes I see it animated and I go, God, I need more energy. <laughs> it's, but it, it's weird because it kind of, I don't want to say it dumbs it down. It, it, it lessens somehow in the translation between here and, and the screen. It, it does kind of soften a little bit. You know what I mean? In terms of um, yeah. vocal quality, whatever, or at least me, that's just me. I feel like you have to give it another 20%. So when you see it, it actually comes out the way you have hear it in your head in an odd way. Oh, that's you know, cool. Because energy wise. It's, is it because they're larger than life characters, George? I don't know. I don't know. Just maybe it's just my dumb ear, but but I always <laughs> when it's coming out of my mouth, maybe I feel like I'm um, doing something, and and uh, maybe it's maybe it's, I'm just not connected to reality very well. But, <laughs> well, but I just think well, I, we've we've known that for years. That's a given. You were, you, were, you did it though, just so you know. Okay, okay. You <laughs> delivered that <laughs> extra. That but extra. it was part, magical. It, I mean, I, I think. I mean, don't you remember seeing Hawk Girl for the first time and, and how beautiful, I mean, those, that orange and green and just yes. everything, about, like, mm. she's stunning. <laughs> she is. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to like look presentable because I don't want people to go, oh, you she's You kind of so do cute. look like Hawk Girl. Well, so let me you. just say this about Maria. Like Maria that. has never even gone to the market without looking without a full like face right now. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not to that extreme. But, uh, <laughs> but there is just no reason not to not to. Wear this skin. I'm There's just not any reason. <laughs> not There's to. no reason. There's just no excuse. No and, reason. and Maria, when you saw yourself and the voice match for the first time, oh, it was so exciting, uh -huh. so exciting. And yeah, I was like, wow, look at. And I, I, I noticed that for every character, I was like, look at the freaking jaw on Superman. <laughs> Yeah. Look wow. at the wow. legs yeah. on Wonder Woman. Look wow. at my the corso. The shoulder span. Yeah, the yeah. shoulder span yeah. for Superman. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I mean, he was Amazing. like a football field. His, little, waist, little waist. Little waist. Like, little waist. Yeah, waist. yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bruce, another Bruce another fan, Tony just says, grateful for HBO Max. His daughter and he are on the fourth rewatch of the series. Oh, oh wow. That, cool. That and they love the Bruce. Uh, Tim style. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I do too. Yeah, so do yeah. I. And that's you know, thank you, Tony. Uh, I, I, that's what we get all the time at the cons. Uh, oh, we, ah, we... oh, oh, Just, I don't drop last that. Bit. Sorry, this, this, this goes on the back. I love that. I love that a previous generation that grew up with it gets yes. to watch it with their kid. That is thrilling. Right? That is thrilling to me. Well, well, yep. speaking of you, did you? I know George. Uh, well, actually, I don't because we were talking Father of the Bride. Um, 
when you started this, George, did you have children? Uh, let's see. What year yes. was it? Yes, you had 2001. 2001. Yes, I did. I had uh, uh, one and about to be one on the way and then still doing it uh, when my son was four. Uh, and I remember him getting a, you guys, have, I told you a story. There's like, they have all kind of merch and stuff. And he had a little cape, you know, strap on cape and a thing, a little plastic Aww. thing is Superman. And you touch it. And it's my voice, you know, oh. I'm Superman. All the things like he had like 50 things I said and he could do it. And he was literally running around the house doing it. Oh. And I would look around and I would go, you know what? If this is all I get to do, that was pretty cool. You know, that is so Yeah. Cool. I mean, that's so gotta be cute. so Do you cute. still have it? Do you still have it for you? Yeah, it's in a it's in a box somewhere. But it's in a box somewhere. <laughs> that's but brilliant. It's really fun. I mean, that's it brilliant. must be something for Maria, you your kids and, and George, your kids to really see you it, you know, any role is something, but superhero is just a whole magical it's really neat. It's, Oh, it's, you, it's really you know neat. what I what I get a big kick out of another show that was that kids grew up with that they love was Wizards of Waverly Place. And yeah. I'm, I'm the of mom. Course. So when they find out that I'm a superhero, even though I was I mean, the mom on another please. show, I, yeah, no, it's, they're don't you see melts. that, Maria, don't you see they that melt. if I look at the mentions, like if people, the people will like mention something in a picture and they're like, wait a minute, the mom <laughs> on Waverly Place is hot girl. I'm like, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so cute. Yeah. Well, that yeah, those the, the, what's really cool is that those conventions that we get to go to um, is kind of a unique way to get to sort of interact with fans, and and the fact that you know most on camera folks are not dual on camera animation voiceover people. There's a there's a kind of a break there. So when you when you get to do both and you see people come up and connect the two in person, mm -hmm. you'll never get that. You never get that in a mall or at the airport. People, people see that your stuff out on a on a table, they go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And that's really that's really fun. It makes you feel like, okay, all the all the years. Well, you had that with um Final Fantasy with I do, the... yeah, yeah. I do the voice of another uh, really arch villain in another video game series. So that's that's another weird and, and when people made that connection for yeah. George, they were like, what? Oh, wait a minute, yeah. you played that guy yeah, yeah, in yeah, Final Fantasy? Super bad and then Superman's super good. So what is it and like it, going to these conventions? You know, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's a lot cool. of fun. Well, I know, I mean, but you are, you know, the voice where, you know, it's not like Comic-Con where they're meeting the actor or, you know, it's such a different right. thing. Right. You know, are are they just as excited? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think so. And also you guys have noticed, Maria and Susan, you've noticed there are a lot of like games and uh, animated, like anime and things like that, that I've never seen, by the way, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you have not at all. Not at and all. there are lines out the door and around yeah. the building for a person that, you know, I, that they play some iconic character in a very, maybe a niche or not so niche animated thing that, that, that most people don't see. But some people see it and they come to these conventions and they're literally like a rock, they're rock stars. Yes, rock stars. Yeah, and it makes you feel so good as a performer because we always want more. We always wish we'd gotten this other role or that other role. And then when you go to these conventions and all your characters are, are in photographs and people say, oh, you're Paulina and Danny Phantom and Sunset and Proud Family and Hot Girl. And, <laughs> and I feel like, wow, thank you, God. I have done a lot. I have done some stuff. <laughs> yeah, it can be isolated. And it resonates. And they're so, they're yeah. so, um, yeah, it's fun. They're such wonderful fans. Appreciative. I mean, I have yeah. not encountered one negative encounter. Uh, they're just so like they dress up and they love being there and they love meeting everybody and they love talking about the shows. And you realize that you are blessed to gift people with a yeah. with something that you were part of that really affected their childhood yeah, or yeah, their lives. Really and it it's just a, a lot of fun. And then we go to these great dinners afterwards. It's really and fun. And we have a blast. And then sometimes you get people that come up to your table and they walk up and they go down and they go like, they look and they look up at you and they look down <laughs> and, you, and then they go this and then they do this. And then they walk away. And then they just walk, slowly walk out of frame. Yeah, they don't, and they they don't, just... they don't, they don't <laughs> autograph it. And you go, all right, all right, there you go. Yeah, they, they, they have no interest in you whatsoever. But I have to say, like, because the thing that we get told the most is um, that there are two things we get told the most. We get told that we are part of somebody's childhood. And mm -hmm. we're, we're told that when people read the comic books, which is a really big part of this yeah. universe, the comic right, yeah, books, right, yeah. that people hear our voices yeah. when they right. read them. 
So people will come up to your table and tell you, and this has happened so many times, a very emotional story from their childhood yeah, yeah, about yeah. how the show meant the world to them and mm -hmm. how maybe something not so great was happening at school or not so great at home, but they had the Justice League. And yeah. it's, and people will cry and they, they'll ask you for, wow. before COVID, you know, it was all about, can I have a hug? Can yeah. I have a hug? And it's yeah, like, yeah. get over here. Yes, you can have yeah. a hug. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's it's a very emotional connection to the show I love and to that. our characters. I mean, the, the impact that, you know, you know, I didn't think of it, of, of children, you know, yeah. superheroes are oh. these larger than life. Yeah. You know. yeah. A lot of people running, out there. I remember with... seeing Darth Vader in person at a movie theater, you know, I was 10 or 11 and I ran away, <laughs> you know, it's like, the, you know, those, those impacts. Sylvia had an interesting question. Was there one episode or a moment when you were recording your characters that still sticks with you? Yeah. Mm. So Let many. Me ahead, there are a few. Yeah. Maria, you go ahead. You take this one first. For me, for me, it was those, uh, the episode Star Cross where I was, uh, uh, very vulnerable, and I take my mm -hmm. mask off for the Green Lantern, and and uh, I try to fight the attraction, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> I said, look at us, look at us, we're so yeah. different. Like I I'm thinking, I'm a bird, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I'm a bird, hot girl. Yeah. And, and, yeah. He goes, and he says, I'm a man, and you're a woman. <laughs> like, like that's the bottom line. Let's, yeah, let's the bottom line. And, uh, I, mean, I, I, I remember that scene so vividly. <laughs> Me too. And I was like, this is a little too arousing for a, <laughs> for a mere animation job. But it was just really powerful and very cinematic. And yeah. it wasn't vulgar or distasteful. It was just raw in the attraction. It was very, yeah. very well done. Very. Yeah. And I yeah. remember those emotions because again, you have to use yourself. And I remember going there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They did romance really, you know, they did a big romance between her and another character, Green Lantern uh, voiced by Phil Lamar. And, you know, if you're like me and you like the romance, um, <laughs> hello, daytime fans. Oh, um, you know, it, it, was, it was delicious. It was, <laughs> oh, it was delish. And, you know, like that's why with me and Batman, Hashtag Wonder Bat. You know, we had that little flirtation and it it just to this day, people love it and still remember it. And yeah. but the hawk girl and, don't and, they want more of it, Susan? They oh, yeah. do. <laughs> they, <laughs> they do. do. They, they do. do. They do. <laughs> George, do you remember anything? What, what stands uh, you know, out for so I, I, I like the, uh, I've said it before, to the, 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 you guys are probably, what are the, he's the cardboard speech. Sometimes I feel like I live in a world of cardboard, which which was uh, so great because it's a um, a man who, a superhero who, who wants to be human for a minute and not feel like he's going to hurt and crush everything he comes in contact with. And um, uh, yeah, that was beautiful. Just, uh, there's so much, yeah, so, well, so much of, of, of what Superman is is, is, is so um, cool because he, he really struggles with the man-god, man-savior complex and mm -hmm. that tension between the two. And I just, um, I think that's I, why my people wife love says the that episode. to me all the time. She says, gosh, you're like a superhero, but yet here you are <laughs> so real in a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, George... But I think people, the scenes with you in, with your family, mm. you know, like when you had any of those scenes, I think yeah. that really resonated with, cool. yeah. with the audience. Yeah. Yeah. But stuff with Lois, I just love the fact that he, you know, oh, he's, Lois. He's, that, that whole charade is uh, amazing. And Dana Delaney. Who played Lois? Dana Delaney. Dana Delaney. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah. China Beach, Dana Delaney. Uh, the that's iconic. A soap, a soap yeah. original. The, yes, yes that's right. Oh, is she in a soap too? Yes. She started on As the World Turns, I believe. Maria, Everybody started. Were you a soap person, Maria, ever? I did one in Miami because it was an audition. Ah. And it was in Spanish. I told well, the so I tell the <laughs> And I had, you know, as an American, uh, all my work was in English when my parents are Cuban. So the Cubans make you speak Spanish at home. See? So I, I thought, oh, yeah, I speak Spanish. So I'd been, you know, I was in the Florida Shakespeare Festival, Coconut Grove Playhouse, and <laughs> I'd only done commercials in Spanish. And See. then I get this audition. Oh, they're doing this novella in the States. 
and it's in Spanish and they want, they're going to use an international cast and they want to use American Latinos that speak Spanish. And I'm like, oh, great. I speak Spanish. <laughs> and I audition <laughs> and I write down all my lines in English so that I can remember what I'm saying. What you're saying. To yeah. pronounce everything perfectly yeah. in Spanish. Well, sure. I prepared so well that I got the darn thing. And I'm like, whoa, I got to know Spanish for real. And it was, it was immersion. That's and I so realized cool. I don't know Spanish the way as I As well as you thought you did. Yeah, yeah. So that was the only one I did. And it was it was a, a great learning experience for me. Cool. I auditioned for them. I couldn't get them. I couldn't get any of those jobs. Yeah. They do, you remember, do you remember any you auditioned for? I was, you know what, it was, I was in college, honestly, is when I auditioned for, because I was auditioning wow. for stuff in Chicago, and I, you know, they were just like, you know, the young kid, whatever, coming on the show. Kevin, Kevin was on was Another doing. World, right, Kevin was way. on a show, for, for real. And really Search was. for Tomorrow, I think, uh, yeah. Kevin Conroy, our Batman, was on yeah. Another World, sure. um, he had a big story arc in that, and uh, and also, I think Search for Tomorrow, so like. Oh, I just remembered, I guest starred on Days of Our Lives, but I wasn't Did a regular. Oh, I wasn't a regular. Fun. Wow. George, one of our fans, Chrissy from Germany, uh, says when when you said you had to find the voice and the right place for the voice, mm -hmm. how was the process? To um, I am. Uh, my training uh, originally was as a singer. I was a musical theater person from age 12 through 22. And that's all, exclusively what I did was music. I was a ballet dancer and a musical theater person. So I was a singer. So when I when I came out to L.A. and I started sort of transitioning, doing on camera stuff and then animation stuff come up came up it, it's a different <clears throat> you know the 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 mechanics are the same but but the, the technique is a little little different in in short bursts you know with animation and screaming and yelling and uh having everything be in your voice and nothing really here so uh in terms of superman when we started my voice it was higher my pitch was naturally higher and uh i think they had to pitch me down initially so the first year I was told. But then after that, I would just sort of relax. And, you know, um, the, the more relaxed you are, you can find yes. the lower registers. And then as long as you're supported with your diaphragm, you can sort of um, get that. But but uh, it wasn't easy because a, a lot of for me, a lot of Superman stuff is screaming and yelling and and uh, getting electrocuted and you like <laughs> got electrocuted. Was, yeah, to this you day, know, I, I'm not good at getting electrocuted. Yeah, yeah. I never perfected it. I never perfected the electrocution. Yeah, it's like uh, a lot of times, even for some of these other video, I've done a couple other video games, and they have you, you know, they wait till the end of the session. You have screaming, like extended screaming, or or mm -hmm. lots of yelling, and I'm not good at it. It hurts. It just hurts my uh, hurts my throat. But to answer her question, I relaxed and I um, just. Mm -hmm. waited for my voice to kind of settle into it. And it took about a year. <laughs> it did? Do you know what's so funny, yeah. George? I remember I remember you making the, you noticed it. I watched yeah. you. And, yeah. and my memory of it is that you made the adjustment immediately. Uh, well, I thought I did, but I don't think I did. I think they still uh, pinched me down. But but the really the second year, I, I think I'd... I you think found I'd it. been there, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marissa, I think, asked, would you would you guys, if they rebooted the series, would you be on board? Ready, guys? One, two, three. <laughs> yes! <laughs> of course. You know, this it. has been my, you know, uh, this has been my calling for the last decade because I, you can't go to these Comic Cons and you can't be on social media and Where not know that the fans that. want us to do a reunion. Wow. And yeah. the fact that we haven't been able to is all of us want to do it. Our director, mm. our creator, our writers all have said, yes, we'll do it. Um, the closest we've gotten to was Justice League versus the Fatal Five. And that was just the Trinity, which was great, but it's not the same as having all of us. So, you know, we've appeared together at Comic Cons and we've done, you know, read throughs that have been very, just absolutely thrilling and wonderful for us yeah. and the audience. So the, the long, the, that was the long answer. The short answer is, is yes. Y -E -S. Y -E -S. Yeah. Yeah. Maria JL, ha hashtag JL reunion, by the way, ah, for there you go. Uh, those of us well, who you know, are get, fighting. Get enough fight. people tuning into HBO Max and- uh, I know, get on there, man. You know, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. That's the best absolutely. way to do it. Mm -hmm. George, you, you just spoke, your, your introduction sort of was musical theater and Maria, I was yeah. curious for both of you, who or what influenced you both on becoming actors or, or you know, musical theater, Mar Maria? I, I would say my mother. 
it wasn't a, it wasn't an actor that I wanted to be like or I mean I was inspired by various different performances by different people male and female but I think closer to my heart who who did I absorb and just imitate with my mother my mother would tell a story and relive <laughs> every moment as if it just happened including the tragic parts and I would just listen to her and she would tell it and it, w it was always as if she was there mm -hmm. and I'm sure that I absorbed all of that and so I would have to mm -hmm. say my mom mm -hmm. mm. and wow. for you George you know I I, I um I, I was one of those freakish kids who just <laughs> I, I played the flute I took ballet and I, I, I was in Little Rock, Arkansas. Not a lot of guys are doing that. The, the guys that were doing it would admit to it would get beat up. Yeah. But somehow I managed to not get beat up. <laughs> and I wasn't great at sports, but that was another issue. Um, and, um, <laughs> but I remember. Going I understand into, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember going into a music, a children's theater production called. The, it was called Rain Child. It was the original production of this kid. I don't even remember the story. It took place in the South, and I remember going. And seeing it and standing in the darkness, and I was in the sixth grade, and floodlight was on the kid who got to be the who was the rain child, and he was there in the middle of the stage. And I remember the darkness and the quiet, and no one was set to, was saying a word. And the little kid had some monologue, and I remember staring at it, going, "What? What is? That? I remember the what is this? What is this? The 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 sort of the convention of of a of theater just struck me as a kid. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. I want to I want to go up." there and see what that feels like I, I don't i don't know that was what it wasn't from there i started doing plays and stuff but and understanding what it really was but i remember that moment was like magic it was like sort of a sort of a it just sort of flipped inside me and i knew that i wanted to do that no matter what and i would do anything to get to do that so wow do you have a do you have a favorite musical you've done uh i've done a ton of them i loved um i loved being in greece Loved that. And mm -hmm. Pippin, when I was a freshman at Northwestern, I got to play a part of Pippin and Pippin. And that was amazing. I met my wife during that musical. Mm -hmm. I think that was maybe my favorite musical was Pippin, honestly. Did West Side Story. I was Tony in West Side Story. Um, <laughs> timely. I did of them. I did, uh, yeah, timely. <laughs> Funny thing happened. Did you see it yet? I haven't seen it. I want to go see it in the movie theater because it's supposed yeah. to be, you know, really big. Uh, but and, and, and I think it's only in the theaters. It is right, right now. now. Yeah. It'll be oh, streaming. I thought, but I thought yes. you could stream it. I didn't know. No, that. Okay. Not yet. Soon. Okay. Yeah. I think soon. And, and Susan, uh, what prompted you to pursue voice work? Did somebody tell you you had a voice for it? I That did happen. And I, did, I used to <laughs> do the ads for my dad's business. My dad had a department store in Winsocket, Rhode Island. And once a week, he would go to a radio. He would do a radio show with just local politics and... And he would advertise on the radio show. And um, I started doing the voiceover ads at the radio show for my That's dad's so business. That's so cool. I didn't know that. That's so cool. How old were you when you started? Like 14. Oh, and you already 14. had that richness at 14? Well, I don't know that I had this richness, but I had something that sounded better than, I guess, the average gal. And, That's great. Um, and well, so... I'm you know that's where it started that that just that seed and then um you know then i took it more seriously when i moved out here um because i tried on camera and it just made me want to throw up i mean it just <laughs> gave me it was just i was so lucky i worked for this lovely gentleman named lamont johnson who was just could not have been lovelier he was a big director and he, i worked as his, as his assistant and he put me in the movie, he got me into the, the union. This is 1990, folks. And um, I did it, and, and when I had to do my part, I just thought, you know, it's like when somebody says I did it and I felt like every, like George, the th being in the theater, and it was like, this is my, I wanna do this. I was like, I don't wanna do this. I just, it was just so terrorizing to me. But as, um, long, as, he didn't, as long as he did not say to you, you know what, Susan? You've got a face for voiceover. No, I was so lucky. As long as he didn't say that. No, and he I didn't. know he didn't. He didn't. He was he was just such a dream. And uh, you know, I got to work with Lynn Stallmaster. The uh, he was oh. such a nice guy. Wasn't he awesome? I love yes. Lynn Stallmaster. Lynn Stallmaster was like a legendary casting director. In fact, just as an aside, I was watching a noir film last night called Please Murder Me with um 
Lamont Johnson. He was an actor before he was a director. Really? And the casting was done with by Lynn Stallmaster. Wow. So it was just like very, wow. Wow. very strange. And mm -hmm. Raymond Burr was the lead and wow. Angela Lansbury. So it was just very I mean, like, what? what? Crazy. Um, so, and anyway, so I just, the, because I knew the voice was something um, and I loved acting. I wanted to be in show business. I, I just was one of those kids who grew up watching Johnny Carson, you know, at a very young age. I loved the idea of show business, everything about it. Um, and so I thought, you know what, if I have this voice thing and I love the acting thing, but not the on camera thing, let me try to do that. So I studied and pursued it. Hmm. That's incredible. And, and Maria and George, for you, in, in terms of you, you wanted to act, did you ever, you know, was voice work something you, you said to your agents, I want to pursue that? Did they come to you? you know, how, did, how did it work for both of you? Well, when I signed with my commercial agent in LA, they had a voice department, mm. a voice department and a commercial department. And so I got accepted into both. I think most people do, right? I, I don't know. Um, like when you, okay. And um, so then I would go on voiceover auditions and um, I finally booked a few and it was really hard mm -hmm. to get because I'd go on a lot of them or I'd, I'm like, gosh, these are hard to get. And I remember specifically wanting to start a family with my, my husband and I. We've been married four years and we're like, we're ready. And, uh, and I prayed, I said, oh God, please help me get a wonderful voice audition because I don't, because I want to be pregnant and it's going to limit my on camera possibilities, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And boy, it sure happened. And it's so, <laughs> it's so interesting that both pregnancies were those four years that yeah. we recorded. Wow. wow. And, cool. uh, and I did get to do a little bit of on camera. I did a Curb Your Enthusiasm Pregnant, but I hit it. Did you um, really? But That's boy, a fun that, show to do. A that show. steady that <laughs> steady job of of the Justice League uh, was just a blessing that's, to be able to a make a living and in a wonderful show and yeah. get to be pregnant. It was really terrific. Yeah. Yep. 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 But there's a lot of competition in voice work, and there is. There I is. Bet More today. now. I, I bet today, yeah, especially More now. because also now most of you are doing it from home, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Right. And yeah. and not only are we doing it, but the celebrity you know, right, the, yes. the amount of celebrities that are involved, especially with animated series. That was, right. you know, you always had celebrities doing commercials, voiceover and on camera. Right. Um, and then it became really okay to do the commercials. And then it became like a big, like people were like, wow, what's this voiceover thing? I don't, I don't have to like be on camera. I can age. Mm -hmm. And then it really blew up. Um, yeah. So it's the, the competition's gotten a lot more intense. Yeah. Yeah. And George, was it the same for you? Yeah. I, you know, it was, I've always done voices my whole life just to, just to entertain myself. I, I just, <laughs> I, I just love doing it. And, and uh, I didn't think I would ever get a job, but I my first animation job was uh, uh, Pirates of Dark Water uh, after being in LA for two years. And it was one of the uh, Hanna-Barbera with uh, Jody Benson and uh, Hector Elizondo. Ah, and I love Jody. Jody. I Tim worked with yeah, yeah, so it, was, it was really cool. Gordon Hunt directed it. And Chris uh, Chris Zimmerman was the casting associate on that. You guys know Chris. Wow. Yes. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a cool first job, animation job. And I was like, oh, this is, I like this. I like this. Were there, were there famous voices you were uh, doing? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Like at home? Like at home? You said no, you were always uh, a that is that is that is funny stuff at Johnny Carson. I, <laughs> I don't do I don't do celebrity impersonations. I just do accents. I have a lot of people inside my head that uh -oh. want to come out. I I know. You know, I'm not Robin Williams that, to the extent, but it, I all day I just like the sound of accents. I love. The oh, sound. I, I do impressions. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do I it. I can do share. Ready? Let's oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go ahead, Maria. I was born in a wagon in a traveling show. Uh, yeah. Nice. Wow. Roar. 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 Nice. Roar. Okay, that's it. Very that good, is Maria. Fabulous. I like Maria. that. That is so fabulous. I, I, I wanted to mention uh, Billy, who I think is a friend of mine, said, I'm in a few Facebook groups, and the Justice League animated series and movies are still frequently brought up and by fans ranging in age from their 20s 
to their 70s. Wow. wow. You know you know what's really weird? I, I, I got him, um, Orlando, not Orlando Bloom. Uh, uh, oh, gosh. Not uh, African-American gentleman. Uh, Bloom. Uh, Orlando Jones. Orlando Jones. Jones. Related Jones, uh, he said to me about a year and a half ago, I said, God, how do you do this? How do you harness Instagram and how do you do all this stuff? And he said, I'll tell you one, I'll tell you right now, Google your name. And when it comes up as an actor, what's the first thing that comes up? And it was for me, it was all Justice League. It was in front of wow. either the bride or scandal or anything. It all came to justice again. I don't know what, how the what the algorithms are or whatever. And I look on my Twitter feed and my and and it, um, it's conversation. I think the, all the conversations. It's all my, I would say ninety eight percent Justice League and my animation stuff. I'm like, what? This is not what I. I mean, I, I love it, but it's not like I'm like on purpose. I'm trying to you know. Oh, okay. It is what it is. I mean, the, your mm -hmm. fans tell you what they like the most, and apparently this is this is it for me. You know, I don't know. It's fine. It's great. That's Great. so cool. But that's, that's, so that's so interesting to to not yeah. fully know it yourself, though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. For Maria and George, do you have a favorite on camera role to date? For me, it's Maria? Teresa on Wizards. I had to do. I got. I got to do a lot of fun, wonderful things, and uh, it it was definitely Teresa. Hmm. Hmm. At at your tables at cons, aren't I mean? Percentage wise, how many of the fans are coming because of that character? Like it seems like they're I guess sixty yeah. percent wizards, forty percent or fifty fifty sometimes, but mm, it feels like a lot. It feels like sixty wizards, forty percent um justice, justice. League, maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna average it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, Georgie, I, I, what's I your think, favorite? I think my favorite on camera uh, job so far has really been Scandal because it, yeah. it, it was, uh, it, it really, I loved it. Loved it, it and so loved fun. you. It was because it hit on all the, thank you so much. I, it hit on all the, pit, the the cylinders. It was like, it was a great character. I got to be funny and bad. It was on a show that was actually seen. It was on the air. <laughs> and, and, for and it, sure. It was popular for seven years and it lasted for seven years. So to get all of those things together and I, and I made, you know, I made a good living from it. So, so to get all those things together is yeah. like really like lightning in a bottle. You it's, actually forgot one other uh, characteristic that you got to play as Charlie what? was what? romantic. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, uh, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have made, had a better part. I, so any, honestly, on camera is all gravy at this point for me. In terms we, of I mean, everybody loved the two of you together. Yeah, we had such a blast. We had such yeah, a I mean, that, that, when, when I went to dinner, we, uh, George and I did a Comic-Con in Florida a couple of years back. And we went to dinner after, you know, the show that night. And it was like being with a rock star. Everybody recognized him from Scandal. Oh, well, and everyone, exactly right you the know, the, ended, so, yeah. the chef came out and introduced himself to us and great. brought out all these dishes and for us to try. And I think they picked up the check for us. I mean, it was really like being with a celebrity. You know, I mean, it was hey, like, wow. It's, it's almost like being with Maria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you know, we go with Maria, she stopped everywhere. The elevator, well, Waverly, the bathroom. Waverly. Yeah. Yeah. Weber, it huge. was a huge show. Huge. I mean, she, huge. you know, she played a mom, but she also played Selena Gomez's mom. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, and, she, you know, my, and you played Demi Lovato's mom in another right. show. That's right. Uh, and you know what's so funny? My husband, my husband figured it out. He said the reason that you get all this special treatment at the restaurants and we can always find a table, <laughs> he goes, it's because. All the waitresses and hostesses are now, they're the kids that grew up with the show that are now working. Yes. Yeah. They're yes. their 20s and they're yeah. working. And, uh, and that's, yeah. oh, that's funny. <laughs> they're the ones working there. I honestly was like, oh, oh, it's booked or we can't get in. Well, let's see if we can get in. And they, they, the book, our booking agents joke that if I walk in, they're like, oh, yes, we have a seat. And I'm like, oh my gosh. That. I didn't know I was so popular. But it's because the, that was my audience growing up. Great. And that's so funny. And it's so really sweet. fun. They're so sweet to us, aren't they? Yes, yes. Very. very. And what was it like playing moms to Demi and, and Selena? Oh, it was great fun because when I worked with them, they were obviously both very talented, right? And I just love that they were such good friends. It was so sweet. I mean, what are the chances of besties at 14 years of age and younger? They're both super talented and mm -hmm. they both become successful. That's mm -hmm. very rare. Usually, wow. you know, one of them. Yeah, yeah. 
So that was really cool to to watch. Mm. And they were mm -hmm. both very professional. I mean, Selena was like always so prepared, very mature, handled all the inordinate amount of attention, like with such class. Mm -hmm. And Demi was like, she was such a light. She, she really, she has, she just, her smile and her, she just glowed. When mm. I worked with her, I was just in awe of her. And she was like very free. Like when she was 15, she just whipped out her guitar and shared a song she was working with, uh, working <laughs> on in yeah. front of the whole cast and crew. She wasn't, and it's a great thing, you know, a great lesson for young people. When I think about it, I tell my daughters, you know, like, you got to believe in yourself and you've got to believe in what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I love this song and I want to share it. Not, mm -hmm. oh, what do they think of me? Or are they yeah. going to like me? Or my, don't worry about them. That's going to, you can't control the them. Mm -hmm. If you want to share something, share it. And I remember her, she just like whipped out the, the, the guitar and played this song. And of course it was beautiful and amazing. And I was so touched at her freedom mm -hmm. at 15 and it was just, I'm just thrilled that they are mega successful. And it's, yeah. it's totally yeah. just, just a, just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. And, you know, and lasting careers, because yeah, it's been like, it's been a long time when, yeah. since they're, you know, Disney sure. days and they've still like, are, they've evolved and grown and aged and are, mm -hmm. you know, they've had their, their personal ups and downs and yet they're still creating and they're still loved and successful. And I'm very proud of them and proud to have worked with them when it was all starting. It was very, yeah. Cool. But it's, you know, it's another thing like the justice league where people, you know, the wizards of Waverly place still mean so much to so many people. Oh, incredible. So much. They just love it. And again, it was one of those wonderful moments where the creators, the writers, the channel was behind it. Uh, the cast was very well cast and we appreciated it. We appreciated each other. I mean, like after like our first Emmy win, the producers brought us in and said, listen, I just want to tell you guys to not let this go by without getting it. And of course, David DeLuise and I being the adults, we knew how you know, having done pilots right. that didn't go yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, canceled yeah. shows and had our, yeah, yeah. Uh, we appreciated that we were being reminded though. We felt like mm -hmm. we didn't need to be reminded that much, but we did because people are people and we can forget too. But course, the kids, they, they wanted to know that this is rare and this is special. Don't let it go by without really appreciating totally. it. And totally. that, was the, that was really awesome. Totally. That's amazing. Susan. Alan. <laughs> is this where we get to talk about As the World Turns and Guiding well, Light? <laughs> is, is, you know, I wanted a reminder. Is the, are those the shows you grew up watching? I grew up watching so many shows. Ryan's Hope, Another World, Dark did Shadows. You flip, did you Dark Shadows. Channels? I remember Dark Shadows. Oh, God. I didn't flip, but I just had different, you know, different periods of life. Like, my older sisters watched All My Children, Erica Kane, mm -hmm. um, you know, Tara, all of that, Vietnam War. I was really young, but I remember that. Susan Lucci coming on, I remember that. And then later was Another World. Later, it was One Life to Live. You know, all, I watched all of them. It's just... That's, a, that's incredible. I, well, I just wanted to... Loving, loving General Hospital when I was growing up. Oh, my God. Oh, Luke and we Laura. all watched... Yeah, Luke and Laura and Scotty. Yeah, it was all like, you know, I huge. It. And, you know, what's so interesting is that people will come up to us and say, oh, when you did such and such on an episode, and they'll be very, very specific about a story mm -hmm. and an episode. And it reminds me of daytime because there are certain things in daytime. If you're a daytime fan, you will never forget, you know, whether it's. One Life to Live, when Karen Wolek is on the stand. You know, there are these iconic moments. And it's the same for this, the, the, for sure. uh, if they're, if they're coming to see you 20 years later, mm -hmm. you have impacted their lives in that same way that the daytime television yeah. viewing right. audience feels. So when you, you have know. people on and they say they still get recognized because they were on Ryan's Hope back yeah. in the day or, you know, Texas, or it's like, 
daytime fans. But, but the fans remember. that watch, you know, my show for, for mm -hmm. daytime, remember scenes, lines, just like the ones talking to us today about your yep. show. They, they, you know, they're talking about, sh you know, episodes that aired. Think about that 20 yep. years yep. ago. That's crazy. You know, it's really, it, it's, it, it, it's crazy to think of the impact, you know, jobs that you have and streaming have streaming too has also changed that too change the game yeah now yeah. It, it's yeah. living on and i just have so, to say like if the shows live on yes you know we get a lot of the glory but i think if the shows live on it's because the, writer, the writing was extraordinary yeah. on the yeah. justice league i mean That's we good. had we we had such talented writers and um dwayne Mc, the late dwayne mcduffie is like a he's legendary and he wrote a lot of my episodes that are, you know, people bring up all the time. Um, you know, they're just Paul Dini. They're just extraordinary. I don't want to start naming all of them because I'll forget, but the, the fans know who the writers are. And it's like in daytime, there are just certain, there were, there were eras of certain writing that were just beyond. And, mm -hmm. um, and those, they will stand the test of time as, as yeah. we've seen. Yeah. Um, George and I mentioned backstage that I had worked on Father of the Bride um, in the PR department. George, what was you know what do you recall about that entire experience of working on that? Uh, you know, gosh, uh, mm, so many things. But but uh, I think did you have a crush on Kimberly? How could you not? Right? <laughs> you not? Right? She's adorable. She's, She's adorable. 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 I and, saw uh, that. I saw it on a on a date at the oh, did you? theater and to think <laughs> back and say, I had no idea that that guy would be my friend one day. That, that is just so cool. Yeah. Uh, what I, you know what I remember most about that? I'd done a couple of movies and I, and I'd sort of was sort of quote unquote, sort of under, you know, I'd worked around stars. I got it, but I hadn't, I, I hit like a lull, like an actor's career is like this. Right. So I'd been in LA for a while and I, and then up and then I kind of was in sort of a trough for a little minute. And, and I was like, and it had gone for like eight months. I was like, what's happening? Uh, is it, is this it? Is this over? And then I had this audition and um, I got it and I didn't fully uh, get it, get the sort of enormity of it until I was on set for the first day. And then literally working, being on set with Steve Martin and Diane Keaton and it was coming to the door for the first time and meeting them <laughs> and everything. And I was standing behind the door with Kim Williams, who also went to Northwestern where I went to school. She was younger than me, cut by five, six years. And we were talking about school and stuff, but we were looking at each other before the door opened for the first take. I and I this. was like, it was like I had never done anything ever in my <laughs> life. Because I'm like, on the other side of that door is door. Steve Martin and Diane Keaton. I mean, I could bear my, I mean, I could barely talk. The door was like, <laughs> so it, was, it fit. It fit the part. It fit the yeah, scene perfectly. Yeah. But I'll, that was the moment that I went, oh, this is, I am the luckiest guy in the world that I just got this part and I get to work with them and I'll never forget this. Forget that I didn't know the movie was going to be a hit. I just thought, yeah, oh, this it is, was just I just thought it was going to be bit. a good movie. I thought, I knew it was going to be good because the writing was good. But you don't have that sort of, you just can't know. You know, everybody right. knows, nobody starts to make a bad movie. But um, but man, I tell you, I, and there were just so many moments, moments during the shooting of that movie when we got to lunch with Steve Martin and Diane Keaton and B.B. Wong and suddenly Eric Idle's there and, you know, all these people from, um, you know, Monty Python would show up and and uh, Martin Mull and hanging out in Steve Martin's trailer. And, and you know, I wow. would call up and Steve Martin would go, do you have a scratchy throat? And I'd say, yeah. He said, do I? He's like a total hypochondriac. So we'd be like, oh, yeah, walking around. <laughs> but, um, but there were just, I have just so many memories I could go on about it, but mostly it, it was just the cool, the great, I was so, had such gratitude for the fact that I, I, I realized that I went, yep, know this right now. This is cool. You know, just like, well, the two of you must have, you know, Northwestern grads sitting yeah. there. I'm still good friends with Kim. We talk all the time and then she's married to each other. Yeah. Pinching yeah. each other, you know. Oh, yeah. totally. Completely. Complete. How cool for the school to have two of their graduates be stars in this. Yeah, game. yeah, it was fun. And then you know they had That's these great point, Maria. Stuff. Great point. Other people, Seth Meyers and David Schwimmer and Steve Colbert, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> Who are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in and, the and same Ma movie, playing lovers, that's really cool. No, no, no. It was really cool. Really neat. Really neat. So. And Maria, I love that you uh, got to work on the Tony Danza show. I, I worked with Tony on a 
Disney movie. Um, and I loved him. Yeah, me too. That was my first uh, female lead part. And he was great to us. He was, he's fun and he's very real, which I appreciate. Yeah. When he, he's he was upset, a really nice you know guy. It. When he's happy, yeah. you know it. And he, he was very nurturing and he's funny. And again, another icon I got to work with. He introduced me to rollerblading. <laughs> I oh, think he, he had a ro he had a rollerblading team. I think when it, rollerblading was really big in huh. like '94 when Angels in the Outfield came out. Huh. Oh wow! Yeah, I think he had a like a Philly team or something like that. But yeah, introduced. It's that crazy. And yeah. so interesting how all our paths cross. Like you yeah, were yeah. publicity for Father of the Bride. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I did Tony's show. I did Tony's show. I mean, you guys are talking and I'm like connecting all this. It's just, and my husband said, a friend of his said, you know, David, you know, cause my husband's a working actor and he's really good. And, really? and a friend of his said, how do you stay in it? And he said, you stay in it by staying in it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly it's right. True. If you stay up. in it, if you stay, just... you know, keep hitting that bat, it's amazing how many of those people who, stay in it how many of your paths cross yeah. because mm. we're still in it and it's uh i think it's pretty cool my career has died 16 times <laughs> <laughs> literally my life support 16 times i'm currently on a downstroke but we're coming but, back up at some but point. it's been revived too georgie yes yeah yes no that's what i'm saying it's it's literally because, about he's, staying, because he's staying in it he's it's going to be back up Exactly. And, you know, just to point out that George, you know, talk about voice work. George does audiobooks. That's oh, like a like big. Audiobooks. Yeah. I, some fans were asking. Yeah. Yeah. How do you stay positive? Uh, <laughs> because, I'm, because I'm doing audiobooks? Do yeah. tell. Yeah. Do tell, George. What do you How mean, do you Alan? Stay positive? What do you mean? How do you stay positive? Uh, you know, you most, most important thing, and you guys will all uh, echo this. Yeah, the most important thing is to have a life and, yeah. and uh, you know, have a connection to something bigger than yourself, you know, have relationships and and uh, realize you're not the center of the universe and, you know, have a family and and and, and uh, good friends and, and try to put things in perspective. And and, uh, you know, that happy is probably not the right word. How do you how do you I think I think you just uh, you want to be fulfilled and be busy and and creatively um, satisfied as much as possible and then make money making money. Here's the other thing. Making money and being in show business are two separate things. You do whatever you have to do to make money. If it happens to coincide with show business, wow, that what a what a brilliant thing. But you can still be in show business and then sometimes have to have a side hustle here or there, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You can come back into it. You can come and go and come and go. But but uh, I think the mentally healthy thing is to separate making a living from show business because they don't necessarily need to coincide, although they do and can. Mm. So. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And side hustle. I love that. I, I love, love that. Yeah, we, we, we all side hustle. Oh. Maria, and, Maria and George, with your children, do you see any of them following in your footsteps? Oh. Maria's are, mine are not. <laughs> Maria's. Well, my oh. older daughter, Bridge, Bridge Barrera, she's a singer, songwriter, slash actor. I love that name. Hashtag Barrera. Yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> is super talented and she is totally pursuing. Yeah. music and um she actually uh did a pilot with me as my daughter when we did christella on abc she was my daughter but then she didn't want to continue on the show she wanted to go to middle school <laughs> and she did and i we let her it was hard but i'm like well my husband said you you have to let her do what she wants and she doesn't she wants That's to go right. to school he said she doesn't have the gaping hole only applause can fill that you and i have hello hello <laughs> He doesn't oh have that hole in her. That's my, right. husband, my husband is very wise. I was just going to yes. say that. Oh, that, David's that's the a best. Quote you need David's the best. Out. So you we let a... her do it, and she got an A in every class in every semester in all of middle school. She got a lead in the musical, and then she went to high school and like she said, you know what? I miss being on set. I'm ready to go out again. So then in high school, she only got to go out on some auditions because. She was in show choir, which is a huge thing in her high school, constant competitions and rehearsal. And she was in the top choir and in the acapella ensemble. And so she didn't have time. So now that she just graduated, she took a gap year. Even though she got into some great schools like Berkeley College of Music, she took a gap year. 
And she's out there and she just guest starred on iCarly's reboot. And yeah. she's producing and writing and very happy and I'm, I'm happy for her. My younger one, who's 16, she is a natural comedian, so funny. She happens to also be lovely to look at, which doesn't hurt in this business, but she's not interested. Not interested. <laughs> She just got a great part in the musical at school, Newsies, and she's having, she loves being with her friends and rehearsing and having fun and backstage. And, but she's not like, I have to get that part. Yeah. yeah you know, right. and that's kind of healthy, actually. And yeah. So if, <laughs> yeah. If, if she wants to, you know, let's say after senior year, if she decides, well, you know what, I think psychology or is not my thing or business is not my thing, maybe I want to be an actor, we support it. We support it completely. Uh, but at the same time, we kind of think it's cool that they want to do something else. Like we, we really support them in whatever they really have natural skill and passion for. And you, that's what you have to, you have to support your kid in that because, and, and for them too, if they don't go for what they really want, they'll just always look back. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to help them prepare, but you have, you have to let them do what they really feel a purpose and meaning for yeah. and hopefully a natural skill at yeah 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 you don't no matter and, and, and maybe hire mom and dad in something there you <laughs> go and friends go. and friends and friends <laughs> and hope. friends and super friends <laughs> and super friends good answer thank you all thank susan you. thank you here let's i'm going to take a picture of all, all of us count okay. down one two big smiles Please. Exactly, cheese. I can't thank you enough for stopping by. Have a blast at the convention this weekend, well, everybody. Thank you. Let's thank tell you. them. Ontario, go to Ontario. Yeah, tell them. Ontario, California. Ontario, California, it, it, to this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, right? Yep. It's yeah, the Comic Con Sunday. Revolution in Ontario this Saturday and Sunday. Right yes. on. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you all. Thank you so you much. Thanks, Alan. See you later. Thanks, Susan. Bye, Maria. See you Bye, blah, blah. Susan, my friend. Thank you so okay, much. Is, is this when we get to talk about as the world you turns can, again? You, you <laughs> can, you, the, the show's yours. What do you, you, whatever you want to talk about. You know, I just want to thank you because you, my friend, have just given me and so many other people this gem of a show that I look forward to. I watch it all the time. I text you after I watch it yeah, and say, I loved it. I mean, Thank you for bringing Well, I appreciate it. And this this was amazing. You know, it was really interesting. I, I, I don't know how many of the viewers were, you know, locker room viewers or Justice League, but to see their passion for mm. this is the same passion I get all the time for right. what, you know, daytime is. Yes. You know? So thank so, you. For so no wonder you be really... In the locker room. But no wonder you enjoy it so much because it's, you know... It, it, it's, it's similar. Sort of that's, There's... It's, it's so similar to what you grew up loving. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Thank you're you, so thank welcome. You, thank you. Have um, a great time this weekend. Thank you so much. And thank you for the shout out. <laughs> <laughs> you're so welcome. <laughs> Bye, Alan. Bye, Susan. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to go see Maria, Susan, and George this weekend at Comic Con Revolution in Ontario, Cal uh, California. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel down below. Turn on notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows so you don't miss it. And tune in tomorrow when the one and only Tamara Tooney from As the World Turns, Laura Norto SVU, um, from the new uh, Denzel Washington movie, A Journal for Jordan, is here uh, sitting down with me. Have a great night, everybody. And please wear your mask and stay safe. Bye, everybody.